Hello and welcome to Enchanted Rose Costumes. Today's video is part two of the construction of the Robe de France. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to click the link above. And without further ado, I hope you enjoy! The bodice pattern I used is from the American Duchess book. I enlarged it without any alterations and then added a one inch seam allowance all the way around my pieces for my mock-up. This is the result of my first mock-up without seam allowance. I have different markings to indicate what I need to change for the pattern and pieces that I need to add. I transferred all the pattern markings from my last mock-up onto new paper and then recut it for a second mock-up. I laid out my pattern pieces following the grain line and added another inch seam allowance all the way around. You may be wondering why I'm doing a second mock-up. The reason is because I had to add changes to the pattern, so I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything I missed before continuing with my fabric. And another reason is because a proper fitting lining is integral to properly fit this gown. I next transferred the markings onto the opposite side of the fabric using carbon paper and my tracing wheel. You can kind of see light markings, so I went over it again with my heat sensitive pen. I then pinned together my bodice pieces and sewed together my second mock-up. I began fitting my second mock-up by folding over the seam allowance of the neck and the front opening of the bodice. I then folded up the seam allowance for the bottom of the bodice, making sure that it was smooth over the torso, working my way towards the back. Because this section is cut on the bias, it makes it easier to smooth everything out and fit it around curves. Next I began fitting the arm's eye. I snipped into the seam allowance, taking care not to go past my marked lines, but making sure that the transition over the shoulder was smooth. You'll notice that under my arm it is cut quite high. The reason for this is, is because the higher the arm is cut, the more range of motion you'll have. It sounds slightly backwards, but it works. And here I'm just slowly clipping into the seam allowance again and just barely bringing it under the armpit. For the rest of this fitting, I just continued smoothing and folding over the seam allowance and making sure everything was lining up. After several more mock-ups, including my sleeve pattern, I finally had my pattern. Once I had transferred all the markings onto my pattern, I started by cutting everything out and then truing up the seams. Truing up the seams is when you make sure all the pattern pieces fit together perfectly and by making sure that all your marks line up. I did this for each pattern piece and as you can see there's some slight alterations I needed to fix for some of the lines and then just changing some of the marks, making sure it all lined up perfectly. I just wanted to make a note of how I write up my patterns. I start by writing the name, the year, whether it has seam allowance or not, what piece it is, and what I need to cut out, and the grain line. I also usually add the bust and waistline uh, measurement just so I know what the pattern size is if I need to recreate it for someone else in the future. And with that, it is finally time to start cutting out my fabric. Just to be on the safe side, I still gave myself a 1 inch seam allowance around the bottom, the side, and the shoulder of the bodice, and everything else was a half inch seam allowance. Starting with the back lining piece, I transferred all the marks over and then added my line for the opening in the back. 
I opted for the triangular opening instead of the rectangular opening as I saw an example of it in the Nancy Bradford book Costume in Detail. I cut two lengths of twill tape to the length of the opening and pinned it in place over the back. Going over to the machine, I stitched as close to the edge of the opening as possible, making sure to catch all the raw edges. Continuing around the twill tape, I only stitched about an inch down on the other side and you'll see why in just a moment. And then I repeated the process on the other side. At this point, you can either sew eyelets or add ties. For mine, I decided to add ties. I started by marking the seam allowance and then I evenly placed the ties over the back opening. And this is why I didn't finish the edge. I tucked in the raw edge of the twill tape ties into the twill tape casing and then pin them in place before going back to the sewing machine and sewing them down. So I just continued the seam where I'd left off and just continued sewing down to the bottom of the bodice. And then I flipped the tie over and sewed it to the edge of the opening. To keep the ties out of the way, I tied them up and the back lining was ready for the next step. Before attaching the front bodice pieces to the back lining, I laid them out on my silk and cut it out. This was one of the silk panels that was in the back of my petticoat that I had to reclaim which is why it's a little narrower. You'll also notice I slightly have my pieces overlapping. Um, this is just the extra seam allowance, so I didn't worry about it because I'm going to be folding it over. Do keep in mind though that if you are going to do that, be careful where you are placing um, just in case you cut an area that you need. But yeah, if you do mess up, Piecing is period. Also, I saved out all the pieces and made sure they were laying in the same direction because I'm going to be piecing my trim later on. And the next step was just lining up all my marks for my lining and continuing with the bodice. Also, you'll notice I only pinned the front of the shoulder strap on. The back will be pinned on later when you're in the fitting. And going back to the machine, I sewed everything in place. Next comes the fun part of pressing the seams. I recommend you press your seams every time you sew one. Uh, it just keeps your garment looking very professional and it helps with construction process later on. So I began by ironing down the front seam allowance of the neckline and the front of the bodice opening, just so I'd have a nice smooth line uh, before continuing. Moving on to the bottom of the bodice, I folded up the seam allowance and pressed it in place. Working on the front point of the bodice, you want to take your time and make sure you get a nice fold in between each press. 
I pinned everything in place to cool and then I repeated the process on the opposite side. With both sides pressed, I sewed a quick running stitch through the seam allowance to keep everything in place. With the wrong side of the lining facing up, it was time to attach the silk. I placed wrong sides together and then matched up the seam allowance along the arm and along the side back seam and pinned everything in place. I folded back the seam allowance of the front lining up the edges and then moving the silk just a hair over top of the lining so it won't be seen from the outside once it's sewn together. I then repeated the process along the bottom edge of the bodice. You really want to take your time folding this corner edge. Um, it took me a couple tries before I finally got it right. Starting about 5 inches away from the back, I whip stitched the silk to the lining. I made sure I only caught the seam allowance of the silk and didn't actually go all the way through to the front. And here's just a close up to help make things more clear. I used the stitch all along the bottom of the bodice and the front of the bodice. And you can see here, there's no stitching on the front. Once I repeated this process on both sides, I moved on to the next step, which was cutting and draping the Watteau pleats. I cut two lengths of silk from my back of neck to floor measurement plus a train. In my case, it was 75 inches long. To make sure I was cutting my silk on the straight of grain, I snipped slightly into the fabric and then pulled a single thread, giving me a straight cutting line along the width of the silk. Next I sewed both of the panels together and pressed open the seam. With my bodice on my mannequin, I pinned the center back seam on the center back of my gown. I began by measuring out my pleats. The first pleat was four and a half inches. Half an inch over from that was another four and a half inch pleat. Three inches over from that was a five and a half inch pleat. I layered this pleat in front of the last two pleats to give the outside a nice smooth appearance. Half an inch over from that was a 7 inch pleat and I put this pleat in behind all the other pleats. Something else you can see is as I'm pinning all these down, I'm continuing to smooth the fabric just to make sure everything is laying nicely. And behind the 7 inch pleat was a hidden 3 inch pleat. 
With the top of the pleats pinned in place, I repeated the process on the other side. Holy moly, that was a lot of peas. Something I want to mention is when you're repeating on the other side, you want to make sure you're measuring the first side just to make sure everything is lining up. I know I had a couple areas that I needed to change just to make sure everything lined up nicely. Another note I wanted to add is if you don't have a mannequin, you can do this on a large flat surface. I just did this process on the mannequin because I found it was easier to film. And here's a really badly drawn diagram of what the top view of the pleats would look like. With the tops of the pleats pinned in place, I smoothed down the rest of the fabric and then measured down 4 inches and continued pinning across, making sure that all the pleats were even. Once I was satisfied with the look of the pleats, I moved on to marking out the back of the bodice. I first pinned it in place and then used my heat sensitive pen to mark out the seam lines, plus the seam allowance. I just want to add a design note here. Something I wish I'd noticed before I'd cut the fabric was the placement of this side back seam. On most of the francais that I've looked at in museums or online, the side back seam was actually more under the arm instead of following the lining seam like I cut it here. On my next gown, I will probably move this seam more to the side instead of having it in the side back like how I've cut it. But that being said, it is really up to you on where you want to put the seam as it is not a hard fast rule on where the seam should go. The next step in the process was sewing the pleats to the lining. I used a prick stitch on all the pleats and sewed down to my 4 inch mark that I had pinned earlier. If you're so inclined, you can use your machine as well at this point. Uh, I've seen people recommend that you stitch this part on the widest stitch just to get the hand sewn look. And here is a close-up of the prick stitch. Essentially, it's just a really small back stitch. Also, I'm sorry for my camera going in and out of focus. I really need to get a different lens for the close-up work. Once all the pleats were sewn in place, I turned the fabric over with the lining facing up and I used a herringbone stitch to secure the back of the pleats to the lining. And with that, we are halfway through the construction of the Robe La Francaise series. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. If you're new to my channel and you like what you see, please click the subscribe button. I'll be back soon with part three. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.